In the glitz and glamour of Hollywood's golden era, stars shone as brightly as Dorothy Dandridge. From her captivating performances to her tumultuous personal life, she remains an enigma even decades after her death. In today's video, we venture through the empty corridors, tracing the faded footsteps of a woman who dared to defy conventions in an era of prejudice and inequality. Photographs scattered across dusty tables offer glimpses into her glamorous past, while forgotten scripts and sheet music evoke memories of a talent silenced too soon. All the details you need are right in this video. Let's dive in now. Dorothy Dandridge, a trailblazing actress and singer, left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry despite facing numerous challenges during her lifetime. At the time of her untimely death in 1965, Dandridge's net worth stood at $10,000, a modest sum reflective of the era's racial disparities in pay and opportunities. Dorothy Dandridge's groundbreaking achievement came in 1954 when she secured an Academy Award nomination for Best Actress. Marking the first time an African American had been recognized in this category for a leading role. Her performance in the musical film, Carmen Jones, captivated audiences and critics alike, showcasing her versatility and star power. Throughout her career, Dandridge showcased her acting prowess in a variety of films, including Tarzan's Peril, Bright Road, Island in the Sun, Tamango, and Porgy and Bess, solidifying her status as a formidable talent in Hollywood. Beyond the silver screen, Dandridge's artistry extended to the stage and nightclubs, where she mesmerized audiences with her enchanting voice and captivating presence. Early in her career, she was part of the acclaimed singing trio, the Dandridge Sisters, before venturing into solo performances that further cemented her legacy as a multifaceted entertainer. In 1998, Dandridge's remarkable life story reached a wider audience with the release of the HBO television movie, introducing Dorothy Dandridge, with acclaimed actress Halle Berry portraying the iconic star. Berry's portrayal earned her critical acclaim and an Emmy Award, shining a spotlight on Dandridge's enduring influence and legacy in the entertainment industry. Dorothy Jean Dandridge, born on November 9, 1922, to entertainers Ruby and Cyril Dandridge, her upbringing was anything but conventional. Her parents' separation before her birth meant Dorothy was raised primarily by her mother, Ruby, who was determined to nurture her daughter's talents. Ruby's vision manifested in The Wonder Children, a singing and dancing act featuring Dorothy and her sister Vivian, managed by Ruby's partner, Geneva Williams. Despite the family's relentless touring across the southern United States during the Great Depression, Dorothy's education often took a backseat to their performances. The harsh discipline imposed by Williams fueled their dedication, but it came at the cost of a stable childhood. In a bid to escape the hardships of the Depression, the Dandridge family relocated to Hollywood in 1930. Ruby found work in radio and film, laying the groundwork for Dorothy's future in the entertainment industry. Despite the challenges, Dorothy attended McKinley Junior High School, balancing her education with her burgeoning career. The transformation from the Wonder Children to the Dandridge Sisters in 1934 marked a significant milestone in Dorothy's career. Alongside her sister Vivian and friend Etta Jones, Dorothy embarked on a journey that would see them grace prestigious venues like the Apollo Theater and the Cotton Club. Their musical talents captivated audiences, earning them recognition and paving the way for their foray into film. Despite early setbacks, Dorothy's determination remained steadfast. Her first credited film role in Four Shall Die in 1940 offered a glimpse of her potential, but the prevailing racial stereotypes in Hollywood limited her opportunities. Refusing to conform to these constraints, Dorothy sought roles that challenged the status quo, even if it meant facing limited options. In 1944, Dorothy's star began to rise with her starring role in Sweet and Hot, captivating audiences with her magnetic presence. Her groundbreaking performance in Tarzan's Peril in 1951 challenged societal norms, garnering attention for its provocative themes and Dandridge's daring portrayal. The buzz surrounding her performance catapulted her to the forefront of Hollywood's consciousness, landing her on the cover of Ebony magazine and securing her a place in the spotlight. However, it was her iconic role as Carmen in the 1954 adaptation of Carmen Jones that solidified Dorothy's place in cinematic history. Despite having her singing voice dubbed, Dorothy's portrayal of the seductive Carmen captivated audiences, earning her acclaim as one of Hollywood's first African-American sex symbols. Her mesmerizing performance garnered rave reviews, 
catapulting her to the cover of Life magazine and cementing her status as a trailblazer in the industry. The cinematic triumph of Carmen Jones catapulted Dorothy Dandridge to unprecedented heights of fame and acclaim. With box office earnings surpassing $10 million and rave reviews pouring in from around the globe, the film emerged as one of the highest grossing productions of its time. Dandridge's portrayal of the seductive Carmen earned her a nomination for the prestigious Academy Award for Best Actress, a historic moment that marked the first time an African American had been recognized in this category for a leading role. At the illustrious 27th Academy Awards ceremony held on March 30, 1955, Dorothy Dandridge found herself in esteemed company. Nominated alongside luminaries such as Grace Kelly, Audrey Hepburn, Judy Garland, and Jane Wyman. Although Grace Kelly ultimately clinched the award for her role in The Country Girl, Dandridge's nomination catapulted her to overnight stardom, solidifying her status as a cinematic icon. Buoyed by her newfound success, Dandridge inked a lucrative three-picture deal with 20th Century Fox in February 1955, signaling her ascent to the upper echelons of Hollywood royalty. Among the projects slated for her was the remake of Under Two Flags, in which she was poised to portray the character Cigarette. Additionally, she agreed to take on the roles of Tuptim in The King and I, and a seductive neighbor in The Middle War Dresses. However, her director and paramour, Otto Preminger, advised her to focus solely on leading roles, a decision that ultimately led to Rita Moreno securing the supporting roles. In a groundbreaking move, Dorothy Dandridge became the first black artist to grace the stage of the Empire Room at the prestigious Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York in 1955. Her electrifying performances paved the way for other black performers to take the stage, heralding a new era of inclusivity in entertainment. In 1957, after a hiatus from the silver screen, Dandridge returned to cinemas with Island in the Sun, a daring film that explored interracial relationships. Despite facing controversy and scrutiny over its portrayal of taboo subjects, the film garnered positive reviews and emerged as one of the year's biggest successes. Dandridge's poignant performance alongside a stellar cast including James Mason, Harry Belafonte, and Joan Fontaine reaffirmed her status as a formidable talent in Hollywood, leaving an indelible mark on the industry. In 1958, Dorothy Dandridge took on a new cinematic challenge in MGM's The Dex Ran Red. Starring alongside heavyweights like James Mason, Broderick Crawford, and Stuart Whitman, she portrayed Mejia, the wife of a cook on a war-weary cargo ship facing mutiny. Despite facing criticism, the film drew a respectable audience, showcasing Dandridge's resilience and versatility on screen. Co-star Stuart Whitman noted her strength during the production, recognizing her ability to persevere through personal trials. Later that year, Dandridge made a significant career move by accepting producer Samuel Golden's offer to star opposite Sidney Poitier in Porgy and Bess. This marked her return to major Hollywood productions after a five-year hiatus. However, her decision sparked controversy within the black community, who viewed the film's portrayal of African Americans as demeaning. In 1959, Dandridge ventured into the realm of British horror with Malaga, a low-budget thriller revolving around a jewelry robbery. Starring alongside Trevor Howard and Edmund Purdom, she portrayed a character named Italian, adding depth to the ensemble cast. Pre-release publicity hinted at a groundbreaking on-screen kiss between Dandridge and Howard, although the film ultimately focused on creating subtle sexual tension between the two characters. The following years saw Dandridge's career take unexpected turns, including an abandoned film project with Alain Delon and a brief stint in the Highland Park Music Theater production of West Side Story. Despite her efforts, financial troubles loomed large, leading to lawsuits and eventual bankruptcy by 1963. Dandridge found herself performing in nightclubs to pay off debts, facing a downturn in popularity that prompted a brief retreat from the spotlight. However, in 1965, Dandridge sought to reignite her acting career, signing a new contract in Mexico for a film role as the female lead in a production about outlaw Johnny Ringo. Despite the challenges she faced, Dorothy Dandridge's determination to reclaim her place in Hollywood reflected her enduring spirit and unwavering passion for her craft. Personal Life The vibrant lights of the Cotton Club in the 1940s set the stage for a fateful encounter between Dorothy Dandridge and Harold Nicholas, a dancer whose charm captivated her heart. Their union, sealed in a Hollywood ceremony on September 6, 1942, was a star-studded affair, 
attended by esteemed guests such as Academy Award winner Hattie McDaniel, jazz songstress Etta Jones, and renowned choreographer Nick Castle. The joy of their marriage, however, was overshadowed by the trials that lay ahead. On September 2, 1943, Dandridge gave birth to their daughter, Harolyn Suzanne Nicholas. Yet, the circumstances surrounding Harolyn's arrival into the world were fraught with neglect and anguish. As Dandridge endured the pains of labor, Nicholas callously abandoned her, leaving her stranded at his sister-in-law's house without transportation while he indulged in a leisurely round of golf. The delayed delivery, compounded by the use of forceps, led to severe brain damage for Harolyn, rendering her unable to speak and robbing her of the ability to recognize her own mother. The strains of their unhappy marriage, marked by Nicholas's infidelity and neglect, ultimately led to their separation in 1948, with Dandridge filing for divorce in September 1950. By October 1951, their marriage was officially dissolved, leaving Dandridge to grapple with the emotional fallout and the weight of her daughter's condition, which she kept hidden from the public eye. Amidst personal turmoil, Dandridge found solace in her political activism and advocacy work. A staunch Democrat, she threw her support behind Adlai Stevenson's presidential campaign in the 1952 election, driven by a desire to combat the racism she encountered in the entertainment industry. Dandridge's involvement with organizations such as the National Urban League and the NAACP reflected her commitment to advancing the cause of civil rights and equality. During the filming of Carmen Jones in 1954, Dandridge embarked on a tumultuous relationship with director Otto Preminger whose influence over her career and personal life would leave a lasting impact. However, the affair took a tragic turn when Dandridge became pregnant in 1955, only to be pressured by the studio to undergo an abortion. The revelation that Preminger had no intention of leaving his wife dealt a devastating blow to Dandridge, prompting her to end the affair and confront the harsh realities of her personal life once again. In a bid for stability, Dandridge married Jack Dennison on June 22, 1959. However, their union was short-lived, marred by financial difficulties and allegations of domestic abuse. Dandridge's discovery of financial fraud and unpaid taxes further compounded her woes, forcing her to sell her Hollywood home and entrust her daughter to a state mental institution, where she would remain for the rest of her life. Despite the setbacks and heartaches she endured, Dorothy Dandridge's indomitable spirit and unwavering resilience continued to shine through leaving an indelible mark on the hearts of those who knew her story. Legal Issues In 1957, Dorothy Dandridge took a bold stand against the sensationalist tabloid, Confidential, filing a lawsuit for libel due to an article that falsely portrayed a scandal in 1950. After months of legal battles, Dandridge settled out of court in May 1957, receiving $10,000 in damages. Following the settlement, Dandridge found herself at the center of a high-profile criminal libel trial against Hollywood Research, Inc., the publisher of Confidential and other scandalous magazines. Alongside actress Maureen O'Hara, Dandridge testified in a downtown Los Angeles courtroom, where the case garnered widespread attention. Their testimony, along with that of a former magazine editor named Howard Rushmore, exposed the tabloid's deceitful practices revealing false information sourced from unreliable individuals such as hotel staff and employees. One particularly absurd claim, involving O'Hara purportedly engaging in lewd acts in a theater balcony, was debunked during the trial. As the evidence unfolded, it became evident that the tabloid's stories were rooted in fiction rather than fact. Dandridge's own testimony during the trial further bolstered the prosecution's case, refuting Confidential's allegations of her involvement in a scandalous liaison in Lake Tahoe. She recounted experiences of racial discrimination that confined her to her hotel room during her time in Lake Tahoe, dispelling the tabloid's salacious claims. Despite the compelling evidence presented, the trial ended in a mistrial. However, the judge issued orders for Hollywood Research, Inc. to cease publishing questionable stories based on paid tips, marking a significant blow to the invasive tabloid press. Dorothy Dandridge's courageous stance against tabloid sensationalism paved the way for greater accountability in media reporting, leaving a lasting legacy in the fight for truth and integrity in journalism. Death and Causes According to Earl Mills, Dorothy Dandridge's personal manager for over a decade, her life took a tumultuous turn following the end of her marriage in 1962. Deeply entrenched in debt, Dandridge found herself grappling with financial woes exacerbated by overwhelming guilt over her daughter, Harolyn. 
As all that's interesting details, Dandridge struggled with feelings of inadequacy, believing she couldn't provide proper care for Harolyn from the outset. Consequently, she relied on caregivers, but her mounting debts soon rendered her unable to afford her daughter's care. Faced with dire circumstances, Dandridge made the agonizing decision to admit Harolyn to the hospital, where she remained until her passing in 2003. The loss of her daughter plunged Dandridge into a state of despair, leading her to seek solace in drugs and alcohol, as reported by biography. Despite her hopes for a triumphant return, Dandridge's aspirations were dashed when tragedy struck. On September 18, 1965, the world was shaken by the news of Dorothy Dandridge's untimely demise. The 42-year-old starlet was discovered naked in her disheveled Sunset Strip apartment by her manager. With a mere $2 in her bank account, according to United Press International. Initial reports attributed her death to a rare embolism, caused by small pieces of fat breaking off due to a fracture sustained during exercise, as documented by Ebony Magazine. However, subsequent toxicology tests revealed an overdose of antidepressants, sparking speculation of suicide, as reported by the New York Times. Yet, the true circumstances surrounding her death, whether intentional or accidental, remain shrouded in mystery. A private funeral was held on September 12, 1965, at Little Flower Chapel, where Dandridge was cremated. Her ashes found their final resting place in the Liberty Mausoleum at Forest Lawn Memorial Park, marking the end of a life marked by triumphs and tragedies, leaving behind a legacy that continues to captivate audiences worldwide. Abandoned House in North Carolina After the sudden death of Dorothy Dandridge, among her remaining assets is a mansion in the old town of Aberdeen. North Carolina, however, time has not been kind to this once stately estate, now abandoned and desolate. The majesty of the past year has faded, replaced by the terrifying stillness of forgetfulness. Years of abandonment have taken their toll on the mansion, evident in the crumbling eaves and the pervasive mold that now cloaks the ornate pediments. The once elegant living and dining rooms, now worn and weary, bear witness to the passage of time, with peeling plaster revealing the skeleton of the building beneath. Yet, amidst the decay, the home's grand proportions remain intact, from its lofty double-height ceilings to its heritage sliding windows. Ascending to the upper floor reveals a glimpse into the mansion's former glory, with six spacious bedrooms, servants' quarters, and a sprawling attic. Remnants of historic furnishings hint at the opulence once enjoyed by its occupants, with a wooden bed frame adorned with intricate carvings and a matching wardrobe standing as silent witnesses to the mansion's storied past. One can't help but imagine the vibrant gatherings that once graced the sunlit confines of the mansion's sunroom. Now empty and desolate, with patches of dust and plaster marring its once pristine walls, the sunroom stands as a poignant reminder of bygone days when Aberdeen's elite would gather for tea or elegant soirees. As we gaze upon the mansion's sprawling one-acre lot, now overrun with neglect, questions linger in the air. What circumstances led the former residents to abandon their home, leaving behind a wealth of belongings and memories? The mystery of Dorothy Dandridge's once majestic mansion still exists, a silent image of the passing of time and the fragility of fame. Although Dorothy Dandridge may have left this world, her legacy lives on, inspiring generations to come. Join us next time as we continue to explore forgotten legends and the mysteries they left behind. Don't forget to leave a like, share and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this video and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.